Put Cancer in the Sun, Moon, or Ascendant position if you'd like your character to come off as loyal, sympathetic, or persuasive. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk all about cancer characters. It's cancer season, the best zodiac season, my season, and just like before, as always, of course, with these astrology videos, if you missed my very first one, I'm going to link it up in the card. That is everything that you need to know to understand what we're going to talk about in this video, which is a whole bunch of inspiration for you guys for cancer characters. And of course, as always, I would love to hear about your cancer characters, so please let me know all about them down below. Cancer is represented with the crab. It's part of the water element, and its quality is cardinal. Water signs are typically known for their emotion and intuition, and cardinal signs require deep focus in their lives. They represent new beginnings and the energy that comes from starting things at the beginning of a season. And Cancer falls at the beginning of summer. The sun is typically in Cancer from June 21st to July 22nd. Being the cardinal water sign, Cancer is seen as both tenacious and emotional. Think of Cancer as embodying the crab with its hard outer shell and its soft inside. They are difficult to get to know, but once you penetrate that hard outer shell, you have a loyal companion. Cancers care deeply about their home and those close to them, and when their home life is not good, they can become moody and temperamental. Cancer's ruling planet is the moon. Remember, the moon represents your inner emotional self, how you self-care, and what makes you vulnerable. So Cancers are incredibly in tune with their emotions. This can make them incredibly empathetic, but they're also prone to mood swings and can be incredibly passionate about whatever their current cause is. The key word for Cancer is emotional. Put Cancer in the sun, moon, or ascendant position if you'd like your character to come off as loyal, sympathetic, or persuasive. Remember, what sign the sun is in when someone is born is their sense of self, what drives them, and their central instincts. But the signs can be in lots of different planets, so we want to talk about those positions as well. And just like we did in previous Zodiac videos, I'm going to put some characters up on the screen that I think could have that particular placement for Cancer to give you a point of reference in what I'm talking about. For Cancer rising, the world is a place that we weave through effortlessly. They do not enter with a splash, and instead find the path of least resistance. They can leave a guy or girl next door impression of calm, innocent sweetness. They're very easy to approach, but it can be hard getting past that initial meeting phase. As Cancer is prone to quiet shyness, they can retreat into their shells if they're not totally comfortable. They tend to give off a familiar feel to those around them, and likewise seek familiarity in their friends and acquaintances. If you don't vibe with them correctly, then they could remain in that closed off state. The moon in Cancer shows someone who is at peace in their home and most comfortable in the past. Since the moon is Cancer's ruling planet, it is best expressed here. They have a huge potential for empathy and can be deeply in touch with themselves and with others. The moon in Cancer is never detached, and on the flip side, they can become overly attached to their things and their relationships. When taken to the extreme, they can even struggle with emotional boundaries. Because the moon is someone's inner world and Cancer tends to be attached to the past, this placement can sometimes beat a dead horse. They may have a hard time compartmentalizing their lives, and instead of focusing on what's in front of them, they might be focused on things that happened yesterday or even years ago. And next, let's get into the personal planets. You're going to see, of course, a lot of the same themes here, just applied to what goes with those planets. Mercury and Cancer color someone's communication style as emotional. They communicate with sensitivity and can sometimes even come off as withdrawn as they kind of tiptoe around their own and others' feelings. If they cannot sort out the best emotional course of action, they might sometimes choose to even not communicate at all and instead just withdraw into their shell and wait. Sometimes they'll make others think that they're hiding something even, but they aren't really. They're just trying to make sure that nobody's feelings get hurt. They also express this placement in remembering everything. But instead of remembering the exact letter of what happened, they'll tend to remember the emotional vibe. This means although they can't recall exactly what it was you told them two months ago, they will definitely remember you were mean about it. Venus in Cancer colors someone's love and desires as emotional. 
People with this placement appreciate committed, predictable love lives. And in return, Venus and Cancer provide security, comfort, and care. They tend to pay more attention to their partner's emotions instead of their actual actions or words, and when they're hurt, they tend to retreat into their shells. Venus and Cancer, thus, is the expert at giving the silent treatment. On the flip side, however, a well-cared-for Venus and Cancer placement will give all the care in return. Mars and Cancer color someone's ambitions as emotional. They are almost the opposite of ambitious in a way. Their motto tends to be, the best offense is a good defense. They can be resistant to change and shy away from confrontation, even when confrontation is what is needed in a given situation. They are the masters of passive aggressive. Mars in Cancer has perfected the eye roll, leaving you on red, and ghosting. When they are moved to action, it is by emotional needs and emotional arguments. If you want a Mars and Cancer person to take something on, appeal to their emotions or the emotional needs of others. This is the thing that will spur them into bringing out their ambitions. Jupiter in Cancer attracts good fortune when they use their emotions. When retreating into their crab shell, they have the power to save and accumulate and then use that to help others. They also rely mostly on that emotional gut instinct, and they value security and stability. Saturn in Cancer shows a lot of Cancer traits in what they fear. They find it difficult to express when their emotional needs are not being met, and they can sometimes dwell on old pain and form emotional scars. They prefer to be the ones that secure and steady their homes, so they're more comfortable when they're taking care of others as opposed to having others take care of them. And those are our personal planets. Now let's move to our outer planets. And remember, those are more generational, less individual. Uranus in Cancer is a time to refocus on the emotional needs of everyone around us. New ideas need positive reinforcement to grow to fruition. During this time, the world may slow down and appear comfortable. But for others, this is just the world retreating into its shell and resisting progress. The last time Uranus was in Cancer was from August 1948 to June 1956. Neptune in Cancer dreams of empathy. During this time, there is a renewed interest in the family and the home. There is a focus in thinking about family structures and how those structures can best benefit everyone in society. The last time Neptune was in Cancer was from 1902 to 1915. Pluto in Cancer signifies a time of focus on security. During this time, emotional security comes from within, not externally. During this time, people will focus on things like trying to make the subconscious into the conscience and using those things to form all sorts of new ideas for the world. The last time Pluto was in Cancer was from 1913 to 1939. And that is how all of the planets react when they are in Cancer. Now, of course, this is a very condensed version of that information, just like always, and I have linked all of my astrology sites that I like to use for reference down in the description for further reading for you guys if you're particularly interested in putting Cancer placements in your characters. So do you have any Cancer characters? Does this video inspire you to make one? I would love to hear all about them in those comments down below. And of course, don't forget to make it a great day.